I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. This is the Mitch County Board of Supervisors meeting. We are at the courthouse. It is Tuesday, July 16th, 2000, it's 2019, uh, and before us we have an agenda. Is there any issues or changes for that? So moved to approve. Stanley has made a motion. Second. Barb has seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 We must approve the minutes of the July 9th meeting. I have one, one question. Who was that guy that spoke who lived on the river and um, what was from Minneapolis? I Vince think? Shea. Oh, that yeah. was Vince? That was Sam? Okay. I got a real nice letter from him, yes. or email from him later. Yeah. He, he sent me one too. Yeah. Okay. Then his name's on here. Never mind. Well, then wasn't there another guy there that I didn't know who they were? Well, never mind. <laughs> Anyways, do we have a motion to approve? I'll so move. Barb's, second. Barb's made a motion. Stanley is seconded. Roll call, Barb. Aye. Stanley. Aye. Smolik, aye. Moving on down the line, county attorney, general discussion. How was Mark today? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Mark, before I forget, at our Heartland Insurance meeting, um, the lawyer there, he had high praise for you. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Glad to hear that. Um, did you get that on tape? <laughs> 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 um, I had sent an email out to all of you on this, um, the matrix scoring system. Yes, hopefully you all received that. Uh, and I went back and looked at my notes and kind of summarized that we are supposed to actually review it and score it. And, you know, Sh and Shannon always did that before. And I guess now that she's gone, I just kind of forgot about that. Um, if you don't make a recommendation, which is maybe what you want, then until they change the matrix again, the state does, you can't send to the DNR, we recommend that you approve it, or we recommend that you not approve it. Which is, here's the only reason that's a big deal, okay? Let's say you recommend that they don't approve, and they approve. Well, then you can challenge that in district court, which, for the most part, is a losing battle. But if you don't make a recommendation and they approve, then you're just kind of stuck with it. And you're stuck with it until they change the matrix, which may be one year, it may be 30 years. So you guys really need, I don't know if you guys want to, Shannon was always in charge of it before, if you guys want to talk about it sometime, and, and then someone talked to Shannon, see what she actually did when she scored them, if she met with people, if she visited the site, how she actually did it. Because, but I'll leave that totally up to you. Well, did you already do one, Steve? Or did both of you guys each do one? I went by what the DNR did, because this is something but that... But the DNR did it, basically. Yes, the DNR, and that's how I would... Mm -hmm. Go with the score yeah. because I really think it's not our responsibility. This is the state's and the DNR's responsibility to do this. And the way it's set up, they're leaving us to take the heat for what they're doing. And that's I think that's wrong. Yeah, I, I mean, you're you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. And I've and I've told that before. You're more of a symbol, and when you recommend or when you if you deny like some counties do that's just a political game that they don't excuse my language but they don't want to have to deal with the public of saying oh we've 
they can make this, oh, we disapproved it, and it was just the DNR that went over our heads, you know, when they knew all along they're disapproving it wasn't going to do anything. Because no matter what we think or right. say, they in the end will agree to it happening, as long as it's through their point system. As long as it meets the matrix. Now, yes. your only option is, you can then bring an action in district court that says, hey, they misscored it, they shouldn't have proved it. But what's going to happen? Then again, they're going to come in and go. <laughs> you're going to lose. You're yeah. going to lose in so district court. And and you're... What we've done is accomplish nothing, and that's why I'd like to leave it at nothing. Well, what we used to do is we would forward it with no negative comments. That didn't say we really approved it. Yeah. We didn't disapprove you know, it. We just forwarded it with no negative comments. Yeah. They're giving the people that come in here that false perception that we have a, a ability to change, and we do not in here. That's exactly right. Well, Mark, I do agree with you. I, I, I think it would be pointless to fight, fight it, but I am working on a letter that I'm hoping to talk the guys into signing as far as some possible changes to the matrix itself. And, oh, I think I would, Stan would remember this. I don't even know if you were on the board then. About a year ago, there were a number of counties, Mitchell County included, that did send a letter to the legislature. I don't know who it all went out to, the DNR, the legislature, everybody said, yeah, we government. wish you'd take another look at this master matrix. We think it needs to be revised. It's old. It's, you know, based upon... You know, facts that may or may no longer be true, at which point we got a real nice letter back saying, we've looked at it, we've reviewed everything, and we think it's perfect just the way it is. Isn't that kind of a summary of what happened? Well, I thought this time I would try actual, yeah. giving actual possible changes, mm -hmm. actual things that they could change. Yeah. We'll see if, because so, if, if enough people do that, they have to pay attention. Well, no. Basically what happens in the legislature is that uh, that was a very hot issue at the time it finally got passed. And they're very content with leaving it alone. I mean, they don't want to stir that pot. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you aren't going to see the legislature anytime soon uh, deciding that, uh, I don't care if there is things wrong with it, they're not going to stir that pot and have a month uh, well, I'm not giving up on this. Well, but I'm just telling you, that you aren't going to go anywhere. I'm not trying to be unkind. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just thinking that it's like with anything. If more people, the more people that say something, but eventually you'd have something to have, gets you'd done. You'd have to have the super majority of Iowa. I know. And I, I'm, at this I'm point aware, in, but At this point in time, they're not. <laughs> and, and I don't want to say I, I, I agree with you for the most part. But this has probably been 10 years ago when the eminent domain issue came up, which means government can take property, you know, for public purposes. And the legislature said, we're just not going to get involved in it. We're, and Farm Bureau was saying, you know, and all of a sudden there was just this groundswell of people writing letters and everything. And the legislature said, well, maybe we better get involved. You know, and they did, and they did change the law. So every once in a while, you get enough people riled up well, and things happen, but it's very seldom. Well, and remember that time with the eminent domain, uh, they were not honest about it. I mean, it uh, it was basically uh, uh, these kind of examples again that uh, you could just take it for anything. You could be building. Uh, uh, wanting to put up, like you say, a hog factory or something. I mean, that, that's what stirred the whole public up, is that uh, they were given misinformation, and of course, uh, instead of trying to uh, uh, yeah. address the misinformation, the legislature was happy to go along with uh, cutting back our, our uh, uh, ability to use eminent domain. That's really what it boiled down yeah. to. And where it, you know, affects you guys, it used to be, okay, somebody wants to put up, come in and put up a huge commercial building and expand, and the person said, we don't want to sell our land. You used to be able to go in and condemn that, or not condemn it, use the right of eminent domain. <coughs> I'm not saying it's right or whether it's wrong, I'm just saying you could do that and you could put up a building, and, and all cities and all governments could do that. Well, they can't do that anymore. 
here's which, another way to look at it too. Um, we have to answer to our constituents that all the neighboring people, um, I, I did get a couple calls and they said they were speaking for their whole neighborhood that I had voted no on that. Um, we're trying to get people to move to Mitchell County. I have no problem with the hog confinements being here, but not so close to other things. And, and also not so close to our, to our water that our quality is, is well, not good right now. Right? That's another thing where I have an issue. It's all about nitrates. And nitrates come from manure, but nitrates also come from anhydrous ammonia. They come from 28%, which is knifed in. Um, whether it comes from manure or anhydrous or 28%, we're putting nitrates into the ground. They can usually prove that, though, just by the timing of when the hog confinement came in, that all of a sudden they can usually prove that. Well, but I, I just remember 40 years ago nitrates were an issue. And it was then it was anhydrous ammonia was causing it, you know, and now it's still a problem and they're yeah. saying now it's hog manure that's causing it. You know, it's it's whatever it's social group wants to uh, promote yes. their agenda, all of a sudden it's that's what's causing it. And I agree with Steve, it's probably all of them. Yeah. And how can you put the finger on hog buildings? When every farmer, right? You if, if you're testing it yearly, you can you can pretty much prove that. Well, I don't think our water from the surface gets down to wells in a year. You know. You know, and there's what some... we're doing with the hog buildings is yet to come. Unfortunately, I don't know. But well, anyways. There were... There was a very interesting letter to the editor last week in the Des Moines Register that kind of <clears throat> addressed the same thing you're talking about here on uh, uh, the matrix and the scoring and so on and so forth. And this individual said, you know, uh, the Iowa legislature has okayed fireworks. And then they turn around and they basically make it to where you can't shoot them. And then on top of it, they put a $650 fine on, on top of that expecting that the local police should go ahead and try to uh, enforce this thing that basically has been designed not to work <laughs> and uh, no I thought it was very interesting that uh, uh, they want to try to appease both groups and uh, yet again uh, this is how some of the games get played Mark, your interpretation of the law is, is that we are legally responsible to fill out our own... No, you're just supposed to review it. Okay. Score it yourself. And that doesn't, mean you need, with it. that doesn't mean you need to fill out a sheet. That means you can just take their thing and say, circle it and say, you know, minus 50. You know, whatever. And then say... Then you send it down with either a recommendation that it be approved or that it be denied, along with a copy of anyone who's filed public comments and along with a copy of the proof of publication. Well, that really isn't right, if I'm correct. I mean, every year in December, we have to, or January, we have to uh, decide if we're even going to do that. Isn't that, that's what we vote on, isn't it, uh, Lowell? Yeah, the resolution. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't even have to really do that if we don't want, we can no. just say, no, we don't want to do it. No, that's, you can, you can absolutely say you don't want to do it, but then let's just say if right. you, I know, understand. you don't like one, somebody's application, you look at it yourself and say, gosh, that would have only scored 250 points. The DNR approves it. You're done. You, the, only problem, the only problem is that the DNR really goes through those things with a fine tooth. I mean, they don't... Yeah. They don't give any leeway. I mean, if they, I agree. Uh, I, I don't foresee that the DNR is going to be uh, uh, missing points here and missing points there or whatever. I mean, they really go through that thing. That I don't know. They're pretty short-handed now. Well, what but, I've heard that's no, but some you concerns. still have to show up to do that assessment. Well, how are we going to handle this? Does does one of us want to go with? Well, we're supposed to go with them each time anyway. Yo, we still have to be there. 
Okay, so are, are you as a chair going to do that, or do we want to take no, turns? I or? do Stan's area, and Stan does mine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's what you're doing? Okay. That, that way we don't have sore there. heads. That, that makes sense. And I drove out there that other day, and they couldn't find those guys. So I don't know if they changed their time, or... Hmm. Oh, okay. But nobody notified me, and of course they didn't even have a street address. They just said it's in uh, Jenkins Section 4. Um, Underwood. Yeah, yours would have been on. Uh... But I drove up all of Underwood from, uh, <clears throat> and I drove up se uh, Section Four and, and on Underwood and so on, and I did not see anybody. It would have been Bill and that Brownlow's. That was at ten o'clock that morning. Been Bill Brownlow's intersection, a half a mile north. Where they four sixty. Yeah, I'm not a nine one one person. I know the old ways. I did, never could do the 911. Anyways, okay. thank you, Mark. You kind of answered my question. I think Stan and I are going to kind of want to go just the way things were. And, uh, anyways, is there anything? Mark, do you have anything yeah. else to bring up? Russ Kemphart. Okay. Any improvement out there? I have not been by there, but I'm going to probably say very little. Okay. Um, the time that you've given him is just about up, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I, with your approval, I'll send out a letter saying, okay, you've been given so many days to clean it up. Sometime within the next 30 days, and we'll notify you 24 hours in advance. We're going to have somebody there to clean it up. And the sheriff's department will be there to supervise, and I'll let you know. If, you know, I'll, I want to work around your schedule to make sure you don't have guys that are going on vacation and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I'll, I'll get a hold of you sometime sure. today. Um, I have had an individual approach me about cleaning it up, who said they would clean it up at no charge to the county. Well, you can guess who it is. Yeah, <laughs> I already know yeah. who it is. <laughs> But I'm assuming we'll just, you know, free is free. Okay. You know, that way the county doesn't have to worry about the costs. And uh, I guess we'll deal with the outfall after it. I was going to say, that probably won't go over well. I know I'm it won't sure. go over well, but clean up the mess then. I don't know. I've, I've been going down and, and driving past bullaces at least every other day. And I don't know if you guys have done that, though. But... Uh, there's been remarkable progress made there, just remarkable progress. I saw the other day they had a huge crane over there. Well, maybe it was a forklift, but it was a big forklift that was lifting the safe out of there. That, I don't know how many tons that safe weighed, but I mean, the, most of the appliances are gone. It's, it's pretty much cleaned up. It's 90% of what was there two weeks ago is gone. So that will be a for lack of a better word, an eyesore that's going to be gone. So, I Well, think. we have another thing that's kind of moving out of the county. Uh, an individual bought a piece of property in Grafton, and so he's kind of abandoning <laughs> his uh, facility in Carpenter. And That's why it's clean. Pardon? That's why it's cleaned up. That's why it's getting cleaned up. And, and uh, Grafton had an opportunity, I understand, to buy that facility for 5000 They didn't want to spend the money, and now they wish they had. But uh, the other thing, as long as everybody's here, uh, <clears throat> really this morning there's hardly anything on our agenda. And uh, I mentioned it to Lowell, and uh, when we have one of these days with hardly anybody, anything on the agenda, do we even have to meet? I mean, there's... Uh, if something would come up, we can always do a special meeting, but I mean. That's fine. I would make one comment. This is just me. When it comes to salary time, I'd hate to have your representative say, well, gosh, they used to have meetings every week, and now they're only having them other, every other week. They must not be very busy. I guess we can cut their salary, so. Well, I mean, this is really about the first time the whole year that we've had really hardly anything on it. I mean, but. It seems like I have a lot of things to share from my meeting. 
<laughs> like yeah, you I guys. don't know. Maybe. No, nobody else is going to care. But <laughs> I guess, Stan, you got a good idea. But on the other hand, it is our job, and we were elected to come and have a meeting every week on Tuesday. So uh, I, I'm just putting that out there. I'm not saying we have to, but I do believe that we probably are. Expected to at least show up here, and I would not feel meeting. guilty if we if we um, uh, skipped a meeting if there was nothing special going on. Just because um, you and all three of us know we're still plenty busy, and if they if somebody wants me to write down what I do in a week, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> Occasionally around the holiday, you might decide not to meet. Like well, we have December, done that, like, like December here, we. Christmas Eve is on a Tuesday, so. Yeah. Yeah. So. And we're much more transparent now with the video, so the public, I mean, it isn't that we aren't. Mm -hmm. All I'm game for whatever. Doesn't mean our, our meetings have stopped. <laughs> right. Or the phone calls have stopped, or the emails have stopped. <laughs> is this something that we have to do as a resolution? No. This no, and, and I mean, there's boards of supervisors that only meet every other week in the state of Iowa. Mm -hmm. Well, and yeah, I'm right. not trying to say that, you know. Today's but, uh, meeting is a rarity. So, we usually okay. have some action. But, anyways, thank okay, you. Okay, thanks, Mark. Yeah, thank you. Greg, we'll let you have the hot seat. I'll keep you up to speed. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I have June uh, fees for you of $4,382.76. How many this morning? Five. Four. Uh, found in possession of a firearm, drug charges, a uh, guy driving under well, Barmet, which is an aggravated misdemeanor and some additional charges. He was a drunk driver that went in the ditch the other morning on Foothill. Citizens called on him. Judgment and sentence, kind of a mixed bag of people today. Okay. okay, remind me, I know R&B is room and board, but what's the difference between 40 and 60? So that is 60% um, uh, stays in the sheriff's account of those fees that we collect um, and then the code provides a limited number of um, areas that that money can be spent on. Okay. And the other 40% comes to general fund. Okay. Well, Greg has given us a report. Um, we have to have a resolu or, uh, motions for this, I'm sure. So moved. Stanley has made a motion to accept the Sheriff's Board? Second. Barb is seconded. Roll call. Stan. Aye. Barb. Aye. Smollett. Aye. So, your report has been approved. Thank you. I don't have anything else. Alrighty. Well, thank you. You have a yeah, guess... quiet week. Yeah. Yep. It's been good. So it didn't sound like it was too quiet last week. <laughs> it cycles. But we're good. So, we're in Foothill did they run in. Um, Not that it matters. Yeah, so just uh, north of the bridge, within the West Ditch. Mm. He was trying to get out. A couple citizens stopped, wouldn't let him get out. <laughs> so, yeah, he was tested like 322. Ooh, was he from? Mason City. Oh, that's was. Yeah, so. Anyway. That was a pretty bad score. Yeah, there. he's a keeper. <laughs> in our matrix system. It's funny, he, it's, I don't think he could have gotten out of the car on his own. No, I don't think so either. Thank so. you, Greg. You're welcome. You guys have a good day. You too. <laughs> Richard Brown. Good morning. Good morning. A couple of things. Nothing too urgent. Um, you guys have to I never did. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I never got a hold of you on that. Okay. I think we'll wait until Casey gets back. Okay. I, 
I've been trying to see if I have access to no one that's in there, and I'm not sure if I do or not. So we'll just get it next week, unless the DOT starts pounding on our door. Okay. Um, crews are out grading 370th. 70th. We started it yesterday. I see they're out there. The other machine will be out doing some culvert work while that one's doing grading. Um, rock run's still going on. Last week we talked about, you guys talked about the county services building a little bit, and I believe you guys have a quote in front of you. Bargain. Yep. Contractor right now is working in the city of St. Ansgar. I think they've got a few days there, and then they'll be doing stuff for the road, so they'll be up in this area for a while. So um, but They move pretty fast, so I don't know if you guys want to take a look at what he's got there. Um, we have two options. The options, and I'll kind of explain a little bit the, the gap mass that and you got the crack repair, which is route seal, which is just sealing the crack. But then sometimes those cracks depress and they're a little, and then they got this gap mass, they call it. it kind of fills in and makes it smooth. Now, it's a parking lot versus a highway. I don't know if if you want to do anything with that or not, but obviously there's a, there's a cost difference in it. So, um, and I don't know, I guess he never did get it. He, he hasn't talked to you about any of this as far as what the gap mass is, but. Just kind of a wider crack seal, it kind of levels the levels the crack a little bit, so that it's yeah. Why well, wouldn't they hold the water? Low speed parking lot would well require to be flat. Yeah, and have it means you have the options there. I don't know that that parking lot's getting older; it's oxidized and stuff like that. But I think at least sealing the cracks would be a good start. And if and if uh, gap mastic can I think always always be done after it's been sealed also. What's your recommendation? I'd probably just go with option one for that parking lot. Just to route and seal the cracks. Since it's a parking lot. Yeah, it's a parking lot. And so I'll move. Well, Second. how do we fund it? We have Did money. You it? Okay. We have money in. Stan has made a motion. Bart has seconded. I can have your discussion. Uh, we do have, we do, we would be able to pull some money somewhere's Lowell to. Yeah, I don't think. Probably don't have all that in that building. No, but we're going to have a carryover of almost a million dollars here, if I'm not mistaken, in our proposed budget. So, find it in '99. Okay. Well, finish this out. Stanley has made a motion. Barb has seconded. Uh, roll call, Stan. Aye. Barb? Aye. Smolik, aye. And that is for the option one crack repair route and seal. And that would be $4,592.50. Less expensive. But we'll serve what we need to have done. So, do you want to? Sign one. I, you want to sign one, and then I'll send it to him and let him know that. Which one do you sign. want me to sign? Just sign there. Okay. I can email it to him. He knows. And... So on purchase purchase yeah, order, do we want to put yeah. option one? I'll just circle what the option is. It's not a big deal. I usually do the other. I usually leave all this stuff alone. Do I got to do Unless a you, double signature? No, 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 you're fine. Only if it requires two signatures. That you okay. Uh, Thank you. So we'll do that. Um, the last thing I think I mentioned last week, we didn't talk too much, but uh, talking about the possibility of hiring another employee. Um, I don't know when retirements are coming. Nobody tells me until about a month before they leave. There's plenty of employees that are getting close to that, and it seems like we always have trouble finding help in the fall. Sometimes we have trouble with having enough help in the summer. I'm wondering if it's possible just to hire another employee, start looking ahead, and that way we've got a full staff here that we can still train while we have a full staff instead of. And it'll be in a knee-jerk reaction when somebody says, oh, we're going to 
retire and then we've got to, you know, race after getting another employee hired. Didn't know what your thoughts are. I think the budget can probably handle it, but how about two? It'll be up to you guys whether we do one or two, but I mean, we could always use the help. It seems like we're always, we need, need help. help. I know you need help, um, but with two, the budget? Well, what it does for us, I guess, in a way, was it reduce our, it reduces our part-time. I mean, granted, we're paying benefits and things like that, but it's, we always end up trying to struggle come fall for snowplow operations. It seems like anymore that we have a hard time finding enough. We have them on full-time. I guess that's just a couple less temporary employees we have to find for winter. My thought is, is now's the time to get two people because I think you will have a need for not too far in the future, yeah. You will have the positions open here. Mm -hmm. And uh, to get these people in, get them trained, yep. get them licensed if they need to get a license. Uh, and we'll be ahead of the game because we don't need them the day one retires and there's a blizzard the next day. Right. Well, and it's, if one retires and we go a month and a half before we hire <coughs> and he still has to be trained. Right. So you're, you're two months behind the game. If we see that, you know, the other, the other option is, you know, we hire two and the budget struggles a little bit, then we go back and when people retire, we don't replace them as, as you know, I think that happened years back. You know, you didn't replace them, but I think that we've got plenty of work to do that we're just not getting to right now, even because we don't have the guys are taking vacations. They've got comp time built up. The staffs are small. Um, not, you know, not that we're trying to spend more money, but we need to get more done. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it would be, I, you know, and it's my opinion, higher to what Stanley's thought. I can go along with it, but if we do have a retirement this fall, I might not. Then, I mean, our two is already... Right. That's the idea. Yes. The game. I mean, that's, that's it. That's yeah. right. And even if we have a second retirement this fall, right. I may not be interested no, I, in doing a replacement. I mean, mm -hmm. but I can... Uh, uh, but now might be also a good time to... Uh, I was on the phone last week with... Uh, uh, John Daniels, our bo uh, bonding attorney, and uh, we can, uh, again, if we want to go up to the $5 million of uh, doing things on secondary roads, um, all of our secondary roads are in the urban renewal, so we don't have to make any adjustments in the urban renewal. Uh, what we would have to do, though, is we'd have to identify all of the projects. In other words, that if we were going to, uh, uh, I have talked to Richie a little bit this last week, and uh, uh, we both feel that one of the things that uh, may really help on uh, uh, the problems that we had this spring was uh, uh, doing the drilling again uh, in the road to where uh, uh, you pull up some of that clay and you replace it with rock. I mean, it's a, basically a 12-inch hole. And you put uh, a French drain. And uh, There are different options for that, you know. And, and uh, that type of thing, um, basically, uh, uh, you have blue clay underneath, you know, that does not allow any drainage, and that can be part of the problem. We had these frost boils and so on and so forth. Well, if we identify uh, the various roads that we'd like to use a uh, drill on, uh, and again, the uh, it's <clears throat> there are several techniques. One is drilling. I know in the past we've done some. I don't know if we French drain from the middle out to the shoulders. I mean that's an option too. Um, this year it was almost hard to determine what was frost boil, what was totally beat up because the roads were wet. You got thawing from the bottom. You got thawing from the top, you still got the ice in the middle, the water can't go anywhere. So as traffic drives on it, you're pumping a surface with a frozen lens underneath everything else, and as it thaws out, it stays wet. You know, there's differences. I, I always use the 
not always the, the rule of thumb, but a lot of times a frost move bleeds black goo. You know, and when a center line is destroyed because of truck traffic, it's destroyed because of it's overloaded. It's pushing black dirt up, not oozing. Um, maybe right, maybe wrong in some of the time, but it was hard this year to determine. I know we've, we've got a, we've got a part-time kid going out and he's GPS and all the, as many as we can find on the, the deteriorated sections of road. It's going to take him a long time to GPS every location, put it on a Google map so we know, but you know, we've got five, six hundred miles of gravel road and every one of them's got a problem on it. So <coughs> it just depends on what application is right, but drilling, coring the holes is an option to help relieve some of that water and get it draining away down to the, to the water underground water tables. But again, if we're going to be doing <coughs> spending this kind of money next year, uh, we probably do need a, uh, some additional help also. Yep. Uh, because like you say, it, uh, in order to try to, uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean we have to have it all spent next year. I mean, right. it could be a two year project. Well, you know, doing the work is going to take a long time. I mean, and uh, yeah. so now we might as well uh, maybe put it on for next week. Do we want to try to uh, uh, have Richie uh, figure out uh, how to uh, uh, put all of these things into a program? And are we going to try to uh, get an estimate of expense well, in a week? I don't know that we need an estimate of expense, but this is how much money we're willing to allocate towards doing the work. I mean, bonding it, uh, or Jeff Heil said again, we can Are you comfortably talking about getting more tip for this year? No, it would be next year, next right? Time this would be trying to have this in place by the first of March of next year. Uh, this would be in addition to what we're doing this year. And Jeff, I also said, I mean, we still would have $31 million, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, possible TIF money after, uh, afterwards, if we would go that road. What do you think, Steve? I'm for this infrastructure. It's for the people of the county. It's for everybody. Well, we all know we've had certainly had complaints yeah, this year. It's been a tough summer. It's been a tough spring. And then again, we're not going to be maxing out our amount. No. We can borrow. We're, this is going to be a slice of it. But right. uh, we're going to need to do something for these roads. I'm going to need more than a week. Yeah. With, yeah. I've got design projects going on. Well, no, we've just, got till March here to get this resolved. Well, no, we we would need him to have this done by December so that it gets included in the program so that uh, then we can uh, uh, put it in the, the urban renewal, hold the hearings and that so that we're ready to go by the 1st of March. But, but Richie would have to basically identify the areas by, the I, by December, is that okay? <laughs> That's when all my projects are due for the letting, but oh. we'll, we'll make it work. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be... We'll, uh, be, we'll, be, we'll make it work. Well, I mean... You give us an <clears throat> idea when you think... It's a, good, it's a good target right now. It is. I mean, the whole thing of it is, if we're drilling, uh, you can list 150 miles of roads. I mean, right. uh, uh, balsam from uh, uh, 390th to 430th. Right. I mean... And it doesn't mean that you have to do it. It right. means it's, just it's eligible out. to do it's it. Possible. Yeah. It's possible to do it. So, I mean... Uh, the, other, the, other, the other caveat to that is having the equipment to do it. If we're going to drill holes, we don't have a rig that can really properly drill what we need. So, um, but again, this is part of uh, what can be spent then on, on uh, doing the upkeep, my understanding. Well, and we've got... We've obviously got an equipment budget. This is our last year of motor grader payment, so um, that's nice. We've got the, if the the bonding went through, so I think the equipment things that go. Am I right? We can work on the bonding went through for everything except the housing. So what you're saying though is I can continue on with the equipment. I can pre-purchase or pre-order get my stuff going on the equipment. Then the one thing I'm I not hearing any petitions. 
Well, I, I want to, I'm not going to pull the trigger on until I know no, I think 100%. Pull the trigger. I, I haven't had any. There's nobody complaining. No. Okay, what you I'm going to do the is, trigger. I'm going to contact, unless you guys feel we should change manufacturers right now, I think we're going to kind of stick with our cat and mat combinations for equipment. You know what you got, and you know how they've worked. So okay. you know how you want to order. At least this round we'll do the same thing. We'll get some quotes and figure out where we're at. And then all the, those are the, you know, we're looking at two major purchases of equipment, but then there's some miscellaneous stuff afterwards. I know I've talked about a, a different low boy trailer for the equipment we've got. And some of the miscellaneous things too. And we're going to look at drilling holes or maybe, I don't know if we contract some of this stuff out stand or try to do it ourselves. Sometimes contracting is a lot quicker just because people will do it. You know, they've got a schedule they can schedule in order. But the story, most of the time it's more expensive too. It, it so can be I mean, more expensive, but it can get done a lot quite quicker too. Well, but again, so, if we hire a couple of... The, the I'm, not, I'm not saying yeah. we're going to do that, but no. the option has to be there because we are we get thinned out pretty even. even I, I, having two guys isn't going to solve yes, all of uh, our problems. But at any rate, yeah, that's... If we do it ourselves, we need the, the proper equipment to do it, too. No, why don't we put it on for next week that uh, we formally or would he decide if we're going to go ahead or not? But, but does he have to have the detail of it you want? Well, no, I mean, what I'm saying is that... Uh, you guys um, want to do a formal discussion on... Basically, the direction it, we're headed for if training. you guys are against it, I mean, there's no sense him doing any of the work. So what I'm saying is, again... Uh, it wasn't on the agenda much for discussion or making a formal decision today, we'll so I think we're going to handle it next, for next week. week then. And it still, I mean, uh, would have to be approved next year, you know, just like we did uh, publish the notice, uh, hold the hearing, right. and so on and so forth. But there's no sense getting to that point if we're not interested in doing it. <laughs> Gotta be done. The phone's ringing. Oh. I, my phone rang twice this week. And one. Actually, three times. Like, excuse me, three times. I forgot one. Uh, you know, when I first started, there's 28 men. We had more machines, more blades on the road. The blade operators routes are are longer. And, as you said, some are taking vacation. Well, one took vacation. His area, I got phone calls in. Uh, not saying that that would change, even you know, with another person or two on a blade. Uh, but uh, the public would rather see a little more response time on some of this stuff. Yeah. And would pay, you know, would expect... It takes the guy the a little to bit spend money a week, to do that. Maybe a little more and, than a week uh, to cover their route. We're 28 men when I got hired. What are we, 15 now? Something like that. With your mechanic. So we've lost a lot of people. Still got the same roads. Yeah, the equipment's a little better. But we just don't seem to get things done like well, and You can look at a bunch of different things. Back then, the roads weren't being loaded as much as they are now, so the response was a little bit easier with damaged roads. Now we've got overloaded roads and more... The thing more of it is, is our roads are being used more, they're used harder, the rock is being yeah. crushed and pulverized faster, and we are not, per se, from what it was then to now, it doesn't appear that we're keeping up with the rock. We can't, we can't keep up. Yeah, and another thing that we're not looking at is the idea that the roads are being used more, heavier loads, more heavier loads than in the past. Our roads are flattening down, squishing out, and we've got so many miles that are going to need regrading. So we have to look at that in the future. But at least it puts a smile on the public's face if we're spending money into infrastructure onto the roads. Well, again, that property that I have down by Rock Creek, whoever the blade operator is, just does a wonderful job of when he, you know, he puts the windrow in the middle, and then when he comes back, he gets that all spread, and he's getting a nice crown because that's all even in that. 
Now I was up on uh, four, I believe it was 470th and uh, Zanius, I mean, in the northwest corner. Again, when he came the second time, uh, that windrow is all along the ditch area. He does not uh, get his blade adjusted to where he's, he's getting it spread as opposed to just moving it to the side. So uh, again, maybe uh, uh, Merlin can kind of keep an eye on all of these guys and when they're, if they're just moving it from one side to another, uh, he's going to have to work with them a little bit. And I'm not trying to be... Now there's... I, I do have another comment. Stanley's got a good one right hand, but you got two good blade operators there. I don't know if you were giving the north operator a, a pat in the back or not. And I don't. I didn't quite understand what you were, how you said that. But Wolfie's, no, Wolfie's one of the best blade operators we got. Yeah. And uh, but you get up into my territory up here, the east side, and. I know the west part of the county was better shaped to start the rock run on. The east side's the worst count on the county, and we're hopefully getting some rock there. And then yeah. they have to crush it all yet, so that's where. But uh, the east side of the county, from the south end clear to the north end, that. And I can't, you know, unless it, you know, soil types, types of. Types of agriculture going on versus the northwest and the west side, a little bit different. You can kind of see that. So and it's been always readily available, easier to get rock on the west side of the county. Yes, yeah. Aspel's been out, Dines is out, yep. O'Donnell is out. Of course, that's nasty rock, anyways. But to haul it, it comes from Dino all the way to the east side of the county. Or it comes from Wagner Quarry, just right on the edge of town here, all the way to the mm -hmm. east side of the county. So it's further. There's less loads hauled into that area. Yep. And I'd like to see things more evened out or, you know, probably ain't going to happen. But, I, you know, rock. Right. You know, these roads over here might get twice the rock. Yeah. The east side of the county. Time permitting, and you know, I could haul three loads out of Dino, right, to one load out of Wagner over right here. And it's you know the the, the blade operators and the territories are the ones that are calling for that rock when they need it. So, well, I know hopefully one, not, well, I know one operator that retired, and I'm not going to say what he said, but he wasn't going to beg for rock, and he didn't. And that's unfortunate because they should be getting it when they need it. Yeah, he says if they in the office don't realize I need rock, I'm not going to beg for it. But he's gone. But your man there now needs rock. Well, that's uh, we won't get into that. Anyways, we'll move on. Is there anything else, Richard? I I've, I've got everything given to you that I know of. I had okay. a call this morning across from Acorn Park. The golf course there at St. Ansgar, he says when he comes down the gravel road to 105, uh, there's brush on the ditch uh, both sides that it's hard to see uh, traffic. Okay. And then he said also on uh, going on the right, there's a tree that needs to be trimmed. Uh, again, it's very difficult, he said. Uh, well, then uh, further back, he called it the tunnel. And apparently those trees are growing to where if you take big equipment and that it's uh, snagging the equipment. On that same road? Same road. I mean, you know, right from that intersection about Going five, six hundred feet north. Yeah, that's always been, yeah. That has to get trimmed uh, by the old powerhouse and that up there, you know, by McKinley's. Okay. I already gave Rich my complaint and I already called her back even. Okay. And I had once, well, one of the three people that called me, right north of Meyer to the state line, right off the asphalt yeah, the going shoulders. east. Oh. I guess there's a big hole in there. Say that again. North of Meyer. North the of Meyer state. up to the state line, off the asphalt going east. All right. There's a spot that needs okay. some rock in there. I don't know how much, but there's a 
they requested that that needed to get filled in. It's now a hole, according to them. Good. So, other than that, I guess, Rich, thank you. Good, thank you. Hopefully you'll have the better rest of the day. It won't get it's real hot. So, so we'll see what that all does to me. Yeah. Thank you, thank Rich. You. Uh, Appreciate it. Yep. Quarters, approve the recorders, quarterly recorder fees. Uh, Pat's got on here total collected $78,642.85. County share is $23,378.80. State share. You know, let's go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, state share is fifty-five thousand two hundred sixty-four and five cents. Stanley has said so. Noted. So, need a motion. No, we need a motion. So oh, okay, you are making a motion. Okay. And I'll second. What you Stanley. do have, what you do have here is that uh, if you take a note, uh, she takes in about four thousand dollars a day. That's a busy. That is a busy office. Stanley has made a motion. Barb is seconded. Roll call. Stanley. Aye. Barb. Aye. Smollett. Aye. Looks like that voting. Mm -hmm. The recorder's quarterly report of fees. Moving on. Items of note, Barb, it means that you had said you had a lot, I'll let you start. Yeah, I really did make them briefer, but there just was a lot. Um, home Health, they received uh, an emergency preparedness grant, and they're hoping to actually purchase an, uh, I think it's one of those real machines, AEDC machine. AEDC? Yeah. And for the courtroom, they're going to get one. They, it was mentioned that they don't have anything up there if something went wrong. And uh, for the sheriff's car, his must have got used or whatever. He doesn't have one there anymore. And then also they want to get tourniquets uh, for the whole sheriff's department that they make use of. Um, they still want to know who's in charge of the building in case there's a mu an emergency. I told them that each entity was should have their own, um, but there still needs to be one person to warn everybody in the building since we do have other people in there now. Um, I personally think we should have Laura and Jessa um, as the backup because they're in the building the most mm -hmm. of anybody. Um, would that yes. be okay with you guys? Yes. Okay. And... I asked Lola to start looking uh, over the, uh, looking for the contracts, and we talked to, um, he gave everybody a copy of, uh, uh, you all have a copy of uh, DHS, oh, uh, yeah. that room use of by them. Um, let's see, and DHS said according to their contract that they are, to be given, so we got to keep this in the back of our heads, so to be given 60 days notice if they need to get out. So when we renovate, we got to keep that in mind. Uh, let's see, we also discussed mold and other problems with landlords not taking care of their rentals. This would have been Mark. And uh, as the county sanitarian, he recommended that if anybody complains about that type of thing, they should con <coughs> contact City Hall because at least at one time, they were considering actually inspecting rentals because they do get so many complaints. Um, so I'm, I sent him a note encouraging them to do that. Uh, he also suggested that they could call um, Iowa Legal Aid. That's another possibility. And October 30th, Scratch Cupcakes will be in Home Health in the parking lot um, because they are having their flu vaccines in, and so from 3 to 6, um, anybody can go and buy a cupcake. Uh, let's see, I had a meeting asked for by Dr. Ross, and um, uh, 
I'm going to try to set up a meeting with him because he wants to have um, deputy medical examiners and we'll need to, it'll be all three of us, we'll have to make an open meeting. So if you want to go ahead and, well, I'll get back to you on the time first and then we'll set the up. Date. Yeah, and we'll need to question them if that's going to end up costing us more money, I guess. Well, it's uh, going to. Well, I'm the afraid. The autopsy it, situation. I'm, I'm afraid it might, yeah. yeah. Shelly yeah. Russell and a few others will be coming here in a few weeks to explain that. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. And then um, uh, Steve had to be gone, so I attended his North Central Regional Emergency Planning District com Committee. And Lisa of Homeland Security told about the items that would be covered by a grant and other grants were discussed, which was good news compared to the news that we will probably have an increased uh, t um, cost to the county uh, because there will be many changes in the contract with Mason City um, as it had been the same as since something like 1985. And, and at that time they had offered to pay for all the training of all the hazmat team and things have changed extremely since then, um, such as in their fire department. At that time, they maybe had three calls a day. Well, now it's more like 17. And uh, a lot more was discussed, but I made some notes for Steve. Uh, let's see. Um, and then uh, let Stan talk about the North Central emergency response. <laughs> since uh, there was a miscommunication, I didn't... I thought my meetings were done. I told you to stay. <laughs> and luckily, you happened to be there. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I actually was driving out of the parking lot. Well, they caught you. <laughs> I know. It's like <laughs> crazy. Yeah, because I had even asked Chris. I said, so I'm I'm done. He goes, yeah, they always have it right following. Well, I didn't realize Usually they, they still had something to vote on, I guess. Um, Eloise uh, Cooper had, did call asking for help with fighting confinements and I told you I did have thank yous from uh, Sandy Offen and um, the whole neighborhood in that area of the last confinement. Uh, Heartland Insurance uh, was held in Toledo instead of Tama due to no air conditioning so I appreciated that. We had um, three property claims in uh, ten in, within our ten counties, and they um, they added up to a, a good hundred thousand each, and one of them was our landfill. Uh, but luckily for them, and I don't know who CRS is, CRS took their fees down, so that helped with that. Uh, let's see, claims are going to start doing differently now. They're going to list everything separately, so you can see detailed data on each claim. For instance, if five cars are involved in the same accident, they'll actually each be listed separately. Uh, let's see, uh, they stressed an EMA should not use a county vehicle as they are a separate entity. Actually, no one should be using a county vehicle to drop their kids off to, uh, to school on their way to work or anything like that because if they were in an accident, there would be a huge fight of who was going to pay for all that. Uh, we're getting more information on what we will pay, paying for training on such things as harassment and sexual harassment. And, and we're trying to find out if we can mix and match. Like for our county, the county guys would need like a group setting and use that board, yet all the gals and stuff upstairs, they probably would just do it individually on their computers when they had time. So we're trying to find out if this extra 5000 a year, if we can mix and match that. Uh, let's see. Apparently last year they had some kind of meal um, that people are invited to and and they paid for 18 people that did not show and so they said they don't mind paying for the meals as long as somebody's so they're going to ask this year when that comes up that you make sure you have an alternate if you can't go and apparently our lawyer said there's people going around and he said you can look it up online to understand more about it but they're, they're taking pictures like at meetings and stuff and they're claiming 
um, something about First Amendment auditor. Uh, anyway, he said, if we have any kind of problems with this, we should just call the sheriff and let him handle it. We haven't had it yet, but apparently one place did. So, and that's it. Well, Stanley. County Conservation, <clears throat> uh, they basically had a short meeting. They reviewed uh, uh, what is happening uh, uh, in all of their areas and, and gave that uh, type of review. Uh, T21, uh, again, another short meeting, lasted 15 minutes, the shortest we've been. Well, because you, uh, uh, that was, yours was longer than expected, and, and they asked us if we could shorten it up, and we basically had to hold two public hearings, and uh, uh, we approved of the public hearings on making some transfer of funds, and so that was that. Uh, then Wednesday night, I went to the progressive meeting. There's still a group of 20-some people, 25 people that are meeting that are uh, really trying to uh, come up with uh, ideas on how to promote the county, how why it's a good place to live, what they want to grow the county, they want to promote uh, uh, the activities that we do have in the county. Uh, uh, part of it is, again, uh, I think we're seeing a lot more uh, use of like kayaks and, and uh, uh, basically they're interested in trying to have uh, access to the Cedar River. That's really one of our bigger uh, uh, tourism Items is a cedar. While you're mentioning that, Stan, we probably better get on the agenda for next week. We never did actually. Adam had sent us that note about the two poles ac boat access. We wanted to use hotel I think, tax. I think uh, uh, Adam was planning on putting it on next week. He was going to be gone okay. this week. Okay. But right. yeah. I love their enthusiasm, but there's still that many attending. Well, part of Part of uh, the problem is, again, it's just like two poles or the Bennett access and that. We all know it, but uh, people from out of the county don't, and we don't have signage. Again, uh, either county conservation or secondary roads or both can be paying for, uh, again, uh, like you say, at, uh, uh, 500 feet in the left, uh, uh, two poles access. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And... Uh, there should be signage, yeah. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we need some signage on uh, some of these accesses, especially on the Cedar. Uh, same, the same south of uh, Osage here. Uh, as you cross the bridge, it's not that easy. Is that Bennett's access? I believe it is. I never did know what Bennett's think, access was. I know, I'm not sure either. But, but I mean, uh, uh, once you get in there, it shows that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. there's access to the river to the north and that. But... Uh, it doesn't say anything when you're on T38, and uh, we really do need some uh, decent signage again. So, yeah, uh, that was my meetings. Okay, I had a meeting with the uh, Boyd Mitchell Chickasaw Landfill. Uh, they discussed new business, the financial statements for uh, June of 2019, and they passed. Uh, they approved a contractor. To dig a well for phase three, and the person or the, the company that got that is Team Services for $2,490. Uh, they had a discussion to do with accounts that continually go over their credit limit and yet don't pay their monthly bills. There's a contractor, I'm not going to say any names, but, anyways, uh, uh, it was discussed and. Uh, pay cash only on all their new loads and they had to pay off their old debt in full by August 31st or no more dumping and they will be paying cash for all future loads so hopefully that will resolve that problem uh, they had a discussion on their John Deere dozer it's a uh, overheats all the time. They just never have been able to figure it out why it's overheating. They've had it at the shop a couple times. And it gets so hot it shuts down. So what they decided is they're going to take a loss on it, trade it in, 
and they made motions and proved they're going to get a cat dozer with all landfill options. Uh, they had a discussion on the, regarding the salvage tin from the back shed that burnt. The insurance is replacing the paint, put new tin down anyways. The old tin uh, was donated for the haunted house in Elma. And <laughs> <laughs> so, and then uh, they 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 discussed the fuel contract. Uh, it was, uh, for LP is a going to be a dollar four prepaid, and Innovated Ag is going to get that. And they they approved fifty five hundred gallons. Um, old business. Now this is comes to us. They talked about the generator. We were hoping that we would sell their generator, the generator we have out at the county home. Well, anyways, uh, they have decided to go with a new generator because for only $6,000 more, they'll get a brand new generator with new warranty. It's all put in makes our generator here at the county home too expensive because they have to have it removed, hauled, pay somebody to set it. And what are we going to do with that generator then? I guess we're just going to have to figure out something to do. I did have a call on it this last week. Did you? Well, um, got their should, number? <laughs> oh yeah. Should we... Lower it. Should we, uh, like you say, uh, try to work with this? There's no sense keeping it sitting there. No, no. we got to get rid of it. Get rid of it. I'll, I'll make a phone call. Mm -hmm. All righty. Yeah. Anyways, that was uh, my meeting at the landfill. I had another meeting. Barb took it. So, anyways, uh, that's that's my meetings. Uh, we'll move on. Clerk Court. Report for June, which is total of $2,805.12. So noted. So noted. Manure management plans. We have uh, Cooper Hall site 1, section 34, Mitchell. Uh, Junction South, 4856 Windfall Avenue, Riceville, and Liberty South Finisher Farm, 4401 Rampart Avenue, Stacyville. That's it then, Lowell. Yep. Okay, moving on. Salary step increase. This is a salary increase for Heather Huffman, RN. And it is effective July 11, 2019. Her new wage per hour will be $28.81, and it was previously $28.24. So, that is that, so noted. And is there any public comments? Nothing, really. No, I gave a little letter earlier, and I'm sure that that was discussed or whatever. It doesn't make any difference, or he knows what it is. Yeah, I'll put it on the agenda for next week. Okay. Yeah. Or prime for life. Okay. Request. Well, if there's nothing else, meeting's over.